one. I am Masihula Bangawala and I shall be your host. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our honorable guest, Sri S. Chandra Sekaran, on the stage. We welcome you, sir. Now, I would like to request our speakers, Mr. Kevin Murphy from United States of America, Mr. Wilson Pinheiro Jabur from Brazil, Mr. Padmin Booch from India, and Dr. David Ho from United States of America to take their respective seats on the stage. Now I would like to request uh, Mr. Kunal Dalsania to present flowers to Mr. Kevin Murphy. I would like to invite Mr. Ketan Bhatt to present flowers to Mr. Wilson Pinheiro Jabur. Thank you very much. To welcome Mr. Padmin Bhuch, may I request Ms. Kinjal Shah to greet him with a bouquet of flowers. <laughs> to welcome Dr. David Ho, may I request Ms. Sejal Shah to greet him with a bouquet of flowers. Thank you very much. To welcome Sri S. Chandrasekharan, may I request Mr. Shoaib Masodi to greet him with a bouquet of flowers. <laughs> now I'd like to invite our next speaker for the session, Mr. Wilson Pinheiro Jabor from Sao Paulo, Brazil. He is a professor of the specialization postgraduate course on intellectual property FGV Derieto SP, as well as a professor of the specialization course on management and audit of intellectual property at IICS. He is also an academic associate of the Brazilian Institute of Intellectual Property, as well as a researcher at the Research Group on Intellectual Property and Transfer of Technology of the Federal University of Wicosa to speak on the topic of ADRs in domain name disputes, a fast, efficient, and cost-effective tool, and the global threat of cyber squatting. I would please request Mr. Jabur to come forward. Good afternoon to everyone. Um, thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Dr. Rajesh, for the invitation. Uh, it's a pleasure and an honor to be here. Uh, it's my first time in India and in Ahmedabad, and everything is just marvelous. Congratulations on putting up this wonderful display of knowledge and um, generosity towards developing uh, the IP uh, rights um, culture. Um, so, um, shukriya. <laughs> um, my presentation is about a, a topic that um, it relates to intellectual property, it relates to the internet, and uh, one of the greatest threats that might have passed uh, almost unknown to most internet users, which is cyber squatting. Cyber squatting uh, is a, a problem uh, created by various individuals and even criminal organizations that are using or have been uh, attempting to use third parties' names, trademarks, uh, business identifiers, geographical indications to um, divert. Uh, create confusion and even earn undue revenues do uh, pay-per-click advertisements and other forms um, 
of attracting internet users and even uh, more elaborate scams as we'll uh, see uh, shortly. So um, a brief summary of my presentation, I'll, I'll just uh, try to do a, uh, an overview of the internet creation and then uh, the system of the, the ADRs and then uh, I'll try to show you that they are really a, a an effective tool uh, in the combat against this global threat. Um, the internet, uh, as, you, as we know it, uh, originated uh, in a very different way. Um, it occurred to the United States government uh, in the late 1960s, at the height of the Cold War, uh, when uh, the United States and the Soviet Union were uh, on the verge of virtually destroying one another because of uh, uh, the nuclear bomb. So uh, the idea was to avoid uh, or, or at least try to diminish, diminish the, the communication risk uh, and then the, they, they said, well, let's create an, uh, a network of computers that could communicate uh, in, in spite of uh, the destruction of a relevant point, such as uh, the White House or the Pentagon. So uh, uh, the Internet work uh, was an experimental project designed uh, by the U.S. Department of Defense. And then in 1969, a special uh, project agency, the ARPANET, was created. And, uh, just as a side curiosity, the dot ARPA is uh, an extension that is still that still exists and is just used for um, security purposes and uh, specific purposes in the, in the internet. Uh, since uh, uh, the Cold War ended. Um, this network had already been put in place. So they said, well, it's a good idea to, to use this network uh, for exchanging uh, communication between academic networks. So we have this as a second phase, which I call the academic phase. Uh, at this point in time, uh, there was a, a transmission protocol uh, using the Unix language. Uh, this was a very basic language uh, and it was uh, revolutionized by Tim Berners-Lee, a professor in the uh, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, uh, in, in the end of the 1990s, uh, sorry, 1980s. Uh, back then he was in, in CERN in Switzerland and he developed what is now the, the language we, we use in the internet, and which is the WW, sorry, WWW, which stands for the World Wide Web. And um, uh, this new language allows us for, uh, to exchange documents as hypertexts. And that's why when we type, or used to type, because most browsers now uh, abolish that, the HTTP, what we are saying to our computers is uh, using the hypertext transfer protocol in the World Wide Web language, take me to this site to this address. And that's when uh, uh, domain names were created. Uh, a, a domain name system was put into place uh, in which every computer connected to the internet uh, receives a special uh, address, a specific address. But it, it's a very, it would be very hard for us to memorize uh, a very large section of numbers. So the DNS system was created uh, to transform these numbers, which identify specific computer, into a domain name system, more, much more easily for us to remember. And this is therefore the creation of domain names in the internet. Um, and they now have a structure that can vary, um, either having the core of the domain name followed by what we refer to as a generic top-level domain, or GTLDs, or a specific country, and then a country code top-level domain, and each specific CCTLD will be able to uh, have or decide to have uh, subcategories, or second level. Uh, Brazil, for instance, has an impressive uh, 
number of sublevels or subcategories. We have more than 100 different extensions. Uh, it is, they are ever growing. They try to follow the, the, the trends. Now, uh, uh, just before uh, uh, leaving, uh, some new extensions were uh, uh, put into place, such as .rio.br for the city of Rio de Janeiro. Uh, this is uh, quite interesting, but at the same time quite challenging for uh, uh, name holders. Oh. Um, and this is, uh, so to summarize, uh, uh, domain names have initially had uh, this function as uh, a simple electronic address, but they have developed into also turning into a, a new business identifier or, as we call in Brazil, a, a new form of a distinctive signal. And uh, in addition to that, and in ways that, they, that differentiate to trademarks, that, as most of you probably know, uh, one cannot have, uh, as a trademark, a generic expression except, of course, very uh, limited exceptions and the secondary meaning uh, cases uh, created in, in the US. Um, but in the internet, you can uh, uh, get hold of uh, what is now referred to as a premium domain. Uh, and some of them have reached uh, figures, astonishing figures of millions of dollars uh, in the early 2000s, uh, um, man.com was sold for $1.3 million. And uh, most recently, uh, we have had transactions uh, for 30, 35, even 35.6 US million dollars for the insurance.com do domain name. Um, Hotels.com, uh, for instance, has a peculiar history behind it. Hotels.com acquired it because it was afraid that a competitor would buy. And back then it was acquired in 2001 for $11 million. Uh, the sum was, was seemed absurd. But now they say this was a bargain. So uh, uh, there is, on one side, uh, opportunities and at the other side, risks and cyber risks. Um, just uh, a few other uh, curiosity cases. Uh, some countries have decided uh, to let uh, uh, anyone interested in register um, um, domain name with their extensions freely available. And um, uh, Laos, for instance, .la, has been advertised as dot Los Angeles or dot Latin America. And uh, Tuvalu, uh, the dot TV, uh, for broadcasting purposes. Um, and even uh, West Samoa, the dub, dot WS, uh, sometimes referred to as the world site or the dot website. Uh, these uh, also happen because of um, the dot com GTLD is uh, the ideal choice. Everyone is most commonly referred to and most uh, usually uh, will type the name they are looking for and the .com. Uh, so we, that, that category has been uh, in certain levels of, or if you try three or four letters, uh, .com domain names, they are not anymore available. Uh, so alternatives were sought and ICANN, which is the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, a very peculiar organization, a non-profit organization that uh, is responsible for uh, organizing the Internet and creating or accepting new uh, extensions, initially only uh, foresaw very few uh, top-level domains, such as .com, .net, .org, .org, and then uh, very restricted .arpa, .edu, .gov, .int, and .mil um, uh, for uh, US military. But then, uh, gradually, spe specific interest groups uh, put pressure and try to create new extensions. Uh, at first, uh, 
some were accepted, such as .asia, .biz, uh, for, uh, as an alternative to .business, uh, um, .cat, CAT for the Catalan community, and so just uh, around uh, a dozen more were accepted. Uh, some of these uh, had specific te technologies behind it. Uh, .tel and .mobi, for instance, uh, tried to be uh, um, extensions that would be linked to specific programming for uh, a telephone database, mobile telecommunications, but they didn't really succeed very much. In any event, uh, a, a, a new industry uh, came up, and this is the registrar, the domain name registry business. Uh, there are many competitors. It is a very competitive business. Uh, you can register a domain name for literally around ten dollars, uh, a little bit over, a little bit less, depends on 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 where or which uh, provider you're looking at. But these. Uh, uh, this new industry said, well, let's make more money, because on, on one hand, there, there are many uh, trademark owners, trademark rights, uh, and also new extensions that could be created. And on the other hand, there, were also, there are also um, these large uh, uh, companies that have resources and important brands and they said, well, I'll try to solve this. Instead of trying to or attempting to register a thousand different domain names under the various extensions, I'll just have my own dot BMW, dot Mercedes, dot Coca-Cola. So this was a movement uh, that has taken place and in the past few years more than uh, 1,300 1,300 new categories have been launched. Uh, this is uh, uh, quite uh, a threat uh, for smaller companies. Uh, and on the other hand, this has revived uh, the cyber squatting issue. Because under these new categories, you can have the dot online, the dot shop, and so uh, what seemed to be something that had been uh, uh, sort of diminished has just recently increased and is likely to keep on increasing. And uh, the threat of cyber squatting just continues to grow. Uh, cyber squatters uh, will sometimes register a domain name as the means to get uh, into more complete scams. Uh, such as phishing, identity theft, or just to earn revenues for, from pay-per-click advertising or web linking. Um, I have had some cases in which uh, I would go against uh, 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 an infringer and uh, in, in this specific case said, oh no, I'm earning $1,000 per week with this domain. Uh, I can, uh, I'll transfer it to, to your client as long as I have just one more month so as to uh, uh, pay over what it, what it cost me to acquire this domain. So it's unbelievable, but it, it, it is something that is happening and uh, at some times uh, many uh, internet users just will access uh, a fraudulent page because it has the appearance and a domain name that looks like the authentic thing. Or even some typo squatting in which just uh, uh, because of a typo, you, f you think you're uh, uh, going to Google, but you mistype it, and then you are at a different page in which you can, might have or might suffer uh, a, a, a attack or just let the, other, the owner of the domain gain uh, by clicks that or advertisements that are there under display. So uh, we have seen, therefore, uh, many ways in which uh, domain names have been registered in bad, in bad faith, uh, either by um, uh, the registration uh, with a view as to the sale or the rent, or in any way the transfer of the domain name to the uh, 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 true and leg legit legitimate owner, or 
some cases in, in which uh, the registrant has a, a pattern of registering third parties' names. Or uh, if there is a registration uh, with the means or the purpose to disrupt the business of a competitor. Or even uh, just uh, you register the domain name uh, for the likelihood of confusion you create uh, as to the source, sponsorship, affiliation, or endorsement of that website. Um, and this is, uh, these are uh, um, issues that just keep on growing. But at the, at the other hand, which alternatives do you have? You can take the matter to court, but that is going to cost not $50 million, <laughs> but, uh, 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 <laughs> but still, it's, it's going to be uh, pretty much expensive. Going to court uh, uh, is usually expensive. It's time consuming. Um, there is a, a big issue, which is jurisdiction. Where are you going to fight? Where the registrant is, where the registrar is, where you are suffering uh, the consequences. Uh, this can take years. Uh, so ADRs, or alternative dispute resolution mechanisms, uh, appeared as an option, a very good option, to combat these uh, problems. Um, just as a brief introduction, there, there are traditional ADRs such as arbitration, mediation, and conciliation. In arbitration, you, you have uh, uh, the ruling by uh, an arbitrator or a panel of arbitrators excluding the courts, the court's jurisdiction. The decision will be final, irreversible, and binding. Uh, mediation, on the other hand, is much more uh, informal, flexible. The mediator will try to facilitate the communication between the parties, uh, similar to the conciliation, uh, with speci just specific mechanisms. But I can uh, set up a different system, which is not technically arbitration, because the ADR system uh, does not exclude the possibility of review uh, uh, by courts, the ICANN system. Uh, I know that the .in DRP uh, is, is, is truly an arbitration, but the UDRP, which was put up in place uh, in the late 1990s by ICANN, uh, is a different mechanism. It was uh, fought as a way to preserve or to try to facilitate trademark ho holders uh, a way to combat the cyber squatting because that was the very first uh, 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 stage. Uh, some individuals have then registered hundreds of very valuable trademarks and would try to sell them uh, for the true owners and this has evolved but uh, just uh, as a, uh, drawing a few comparisons, uh, uh, and, and so there are some similarities between what ICANN has put, up, has put in place, but some differences. The biggest difference is that uh, the UDRP and other policies that later on have uh, uh, been created, uh, they can be reviewed by court. But the good thing is, and the similarities with, with the arbitration, is that um, there is a certain of freedom, it's a certain who will decide. Uh, they are both uh, uh, adversary mechanism, mechanisms, but more than that, um, these, these disputes will be uh, resolved on a fast, in a fast way. Um, just uh, a few of the examples of, the, of these policies, of these ADRs that have been created. The UDRP was the first one, but then uh, all, more than a dozen have been uh, also delivered. Uh, just uh, to, to give you uh, an overview of the UDRP, um, this uh, policy has been included in, in all uh, domain name registrations agreements and, well, all GTLDs uh, agreements uh, and many different uh, country codes top-level domains have also adhered to, to the UDRP or uh, have created 
variant uh, to the UDRP. Um, the UDRP was created just to combat the trademark uh, cases. So this is uh, one of the flaws it has. Uh, if you have a personal name or if you have uh, a geographic indication, uh, this, is, is, has, this has been tricky. I'll, I'll, send, I'll show some examples. Uh, so this is where it could evolve. But uh, you have now six different providers that uh, uh, can uh, render a case. Uh, WIPO and Forum are the, the ones that are uh, the most commonly used and receive most of the cases. Uh, and just for you to have an idea in terms of costs, uh, it will cost you uh, roughly $1,300 to go uh, to have a case, a, a dispute, uh, if it involves just one panelist decided, or $1,500 if it's WIPO. Uh, this is very cheap compared to litigation in almost any nation. Uh, what you have to show is, ju is just that uh, you own uh, a, com a trademark which is identical or similar to the disputed domain name and that the disputed domain, uh, that the domain name holder has no rights or legi legitimate interest in relation to the disputed domain name and that the disputed domain name has um, been registered and is being used in bad, in bad faith. Um, this is also a point in in which uh, um, uh, UDRP could evolve, because sometimes it's easy for you to show that uh, there is bad faith in the use, but not necessarily in the registration. So uh, the Brazilian uh, equivalent to the UDRP uh, has the it can you can you just need to show that the domain name was registered in bad faith or is being used in bad faith. And uh, what can you request? Which remedies can you request in, in such a procedure? Either the transfer or the cancellation of the domain name under dispute. There, there, is no, there are no uh, um, penalties, no damages, uh, no losses that you can recover. Uh, and just to, for you to have a, 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 an idea uh, of the flow of the, the, um, the procedure, it is a very fast procedure, usually around 60 days, in around 60 days, you have the case a solution, a decision rendered. Uh, in comparison to what a, a, a case takes in before court, it's quite advantageous. advantageous. Um, the only thing, the only downside is that you have to, when you file a complaint, you have to say that if that decision will be uh, uh, discussed, uh, whether it will be discussed at the courts in, in which uh, there is the principal register, uh, the principal office of the register, the domain name register, or uh, whether uh, uh, the domain name holder's address uh, and the, who its records are. Um, just a, a quick overview of uh, interesting cases which have dealt uh, not with just trademarks but uh, with personal names. Um, WIPO has, has done a wonderful job in reviewing over uh, 35,000 35, decisions uh, and they have um, compiled uh, an overview um, and um, personal names can to some extent uh, be used as the basis uh, of a, a, a dispute uh, if you can show that that personal name has been used in commerce in connection with a commercial activity. So Victoria Beckham uh, was able to be su successful in, in uh, the transfer of and, and having the, vic the transfer of the Victoria Beckham info domain name. Uh, the same with Haleberry uh, and the Haleberry.com. But uh, Victor Topa uh, was not that <coughs> fortunate, and he could not show 
uh, uh, that uh, his personal name was used in, as a source identifying uh, identifier. Um, uh, another and very recent uh, uh, develop and second or different uh, uh, policies, the URS, the Uniform uh, Rapid Suspension, and this is only available for the new extensions. Um, it was created in 2013. Uh, and this is just for clear cut cases of infringement. And the sole remedy you can request is the suspension of the registration of the domain name. Uh, it is uh, just three providers uh, have been accredited, um, and the costs are even uh, more interesting. Uh, $375 or even 200 euros for the MFST. Um, the only thing is that uh, you have to have a nominative trademark registered and in use to be the basis of the, the complaint. Uh, so it's a very limited procedure. Uh, it is even faster. Uh, the decision will have to be handed out in 48 hours. And this is really for no genuine issue of material fact, only clear cases of trademark abuse. Um, there are other uh, uh, ADRs and tendencies. As I mentioned, uh, and this is uh, what we have in Brazil, uh, Brazil took more than 10 years to, to have its own uh, um, UDRP variant, but at least we have added some more uh, possible grounds on which to file uh, a case. Uh, it can be a trademark either filed or registered in Brazil, or a well-known trademark in Brazil, uh, or uh, a trade name, a title of the establishment, a civil name, a family name, uh, a notorious pseudonym, or even another domain name that has been previously registered. So this is, these are options uh, and possible uh, uh, developments that UDRP can take. And uh, I hope, and now turning to a conclusion, that uh, I've been able to, to show you that ADRs are a fast, efficient, and cost-effective tool in the, combat against, in the combat against cyber squatting. Thank you very much. Shukriya. Thank you very much, Mr. Jabul. That was very uh, As a gesture of thanks, we request Sri S. Chandra Sikran to present the mementos and certificates to our speakers, Mr. Kevin Murphy. to Mr. Wilson Pinheiro Jabur. Excellent. And to Mr. Padmin Buch. And to Dr. David Ho. Thank you very much, sir. 
We extend our gratitude to all our distinguished speakers for giving such excellent presentations. Ladies